John chapter 6 is where we'll find our reading. And you pray for us today. We desire God's help. Uh, in the message, we're going to take our time, just deliver to you what God has given to us. It's a good, there's a good spirit here in the church today. I, I was over here in the, uh, in the fellowship hall, a pretty good time before church, really, and before our established church time, I should say. And I could hear from the fellowship hall all the way over into the foyer and here into the sanctuary, I could hear God's people having fellowship and talking and laughing. And I could feel the, the joy. I could feel the spirit of the Lord. I could feel his presence. And it thrilled my heart uh, to, to be a part and experience what God revealed to me at that moment. To know that uh, there truly is uh, a we can know that we pass from death unto life because we love the brethren. And I'm thankful that you're here today. I'm praying that God will help every one of us. I know he will. The word of God will always help you if you just eat it. And so uh, there's truth in God's word. And by now I trust that you have found your place in John chapter 6. And if you have, would you say amen? amen. Would you shout amen? amen? Would you shout amen? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. We'll find our reading in the latter part of that chapter. About 12 verses of scripture beginning in verse 59. We're interested today. Our thought will be taken from verses 66 and 67. And you pray for us that God would use us as vessels of clay for his glory and his honor. The Bible here says these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is in hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What, and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except what were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, of the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Father, today... God, may you help us, Lord, in the preaching. Help us be faithful to your word. Help us to be hearers, but not only hearers, but doers also. Father, I pray, Father, your presence would inhabit this place this morning. May the Holy Spirit uh, do his office work in conviction. May you draw sinners unto yourself, and I'll give praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. You may be seated. I want to preach on this thought this morning. Will ye also go away? Yeah. Our passage of scripture that we read here this morning is filled to some extent with a great tragedy. There was a time when many of the disciples 
and many of the or many people and great multitudes had followed after the Lord. Why there in John chapter two in Jerusalem, many followed after the Lord. I mean, there in Samaria in chapter four of this same gospel, uh, great miracles were performed and many followed after the Lord. Why, even in this same chapter, in the beginning of the chapter, there in Galilee on the day before uh, this occurrence when Jesus fed 5,000 with five loaves and two fishes, uh, great multitudes uh, uh, followed after the Lord. But my friend, here in the shadow of the cross, here in the shadow of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, many were offended uh, and many departed uh, and left the Lord Jesus Christ. May I say today uh, that in the shadow of the cross uh, uh, we see sin and shame. Uh, I mean we see in the shadow of the cross uh, uh, we see man uh, uh, and the heart of man that is deceitful and wicked. Uh, uh, we see the cruelty. Uh, uh, we see the rejection uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we see the judgment of sin at the cross of Calvary. My friend today, if our people are ever going to be saved, if my friends and family and neighbors uh, uh, ever come to a knowledge of saving grace, of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to have to deal with their sin at the cross of Calvary. It was at the cross that the Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood that I might have forgiveness of sin. And this offended many of the people. A lot of people were along, a lot of people came for the show. Some came for the spectacle and, and some came uh, to be simply fed uh, and others fought for various reasons. Uh, but when the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, began to speak uh, of his soon coming crucifixion uh, at the cross of Calvary, uh, my friend, many people left the Lord. And leaving is a hard thing. I mean, uh, at the shadow of the cross, not only do we see sin and shame, but thank the Lord we have salvation because if the Lord Jesus Christ had not died at Calvary, I, I'd still be in my sin uh, and I'd still be lost uh, and I'd still be headed to heaven. But thanks be to God that the Lamb of God, the, the Son of God died at the cross of Calvary uh, and he shed his blood uh, that I might have life uh, and have it more abundantly. And glory, hallelujah. Will you also go away? I mean, as long as there were miracles and as long as there was healing and as long as the multitudes were fed, uh, there were great numbers and great crowds. Uh, but my friend, uh, in the shadow of the cross, uh, as, his, uh, as his pending crucifixion drew closer and as the Lord began to share with him uh, uh, about his blood that he would shed and his body that would be broken, uh, and as he preached uh, of the sermon on the bread of life, uh, many were offended and went back the way they came. The Lord, or the scriptures record in verse 60 of our text, He said, Many therefore of His disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? In verse 66, the Bible says, From this time, many of His disciples went back and walked no more with him. I thought about leaving. I, 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 I don't like separation. I, I don't like, I mean, uh, I remember uh, uh, when, when uh, we were, uh, when I was living still in Tennessee and I still had 
one son here in Indiana and, and two daughters there in Tennessee and my son would come to visit and, and, uh, and he lived there for a while and he came back and, and back and back and so on. But uh, when he would come to visit and I'd watch him leave, I, I always dreaded a, a separation. I, I, I mean, I, I want everybody to be together. I, I want all the children to be gathered up together. I, I, I don't have to be right up uh, with them at every moment, but I like to know that they're around and everybody's okay uh, and everybody's well fed uh, and that they're doing okay uh, and I do not like separations. It's always bothered me. My daughter left the other day and she went back to Tennessee and and I, I, I watched her leave and I stood there on the porch and, and I waved at them and I, and I waved and I could see her waving back and, and I waved a little farther and I, and I kept standing there until she went all the way out of sight. I, I didn't go back in the house till she was a plumb out of sight. I, I wanted to watch her as far as I could. I, I don't like separation. And here we had some people that had left. A lot of people are leaving. Uh, Old-fashioned, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist churches. Uh, people are leaving today uh, uh, because they're offended uh, uh, by the doctrines and the teaching uh, of this King James Bible. Uh, they want something new and something modern. Uh, they want something that will tickle their ears. Uh, they don't want to feel bad. Uh, they want to live in their sin uh, and continue the way that they were uh, and never come uh, uh, to repentance uh, and a knowledge of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Leaving is hard. I thought I, I called dad yesterday. He, he, had no, he had no reason or I didn't even tell him why I was asking him this and, and because I knew the Lord had laid this message on my heart and I said dad remind me of uh, something I've heard you talk about uh, uh, all of my life and he began to remind me about uh, a, a man in Kentucky that I'll not mention his name, uh, and uh, he still has relatives that live even in this area, but uh, about in the 1920s, uh, uh, down home in Kentucky, uh, uh, for whatever reason, he decided uh, he was going to leave. And, and uh, our family, with, uh, we were related by marriage, if you will, and, and, and he walked out of the house, and, and the little children were following him, and his wife were following him, and he walked off, and he told them to go back home, uh, and he was leaving, uh, and he was never heard from ever again. hundred years later, and his grandchildren still, if you ask them, that they'll tell you that he was never heard from ever again. Never saw. They don't know if he was murdered, if he took his own life, if he moved somewhere and took another identity. He just walked off and left it all, and he left it all behind and was never heard from ever again. A lot of people are leaving today and they're leaving it all behind. I mean, they're willing because of the hardness of the heart and the allure of this world and the enticement of the devil and all the things and the blindness. They're willing to walk off and leave it all behind. And the disciples here, the Lord asked them a question. He said, will you also go away? Ah, my mom had a brother that took his life back in 1996. And, and uh, I was there the day we got the call. And I remember standing in the yard uh, and, uh, there on that October day. And I walked up to my mother. And I took my coat and I put it around her. Uh, it was cold out. And they brought him outside. Uh, and uh, he had not yet passed. But he would, within just an hour or two, took his own life. Uh, and he, he left the family with unanswered questions. Uh, uh, with heartache uh, and disappointment. Uh, and he left, and he never came back. Brother Carrick, just this Wednesday night, uh, while we were at church, I believe you took a call, is that right? And I, I won't, he didn't share with me, and I don't know about the details, but he's a, he's a fireman, an EMT, and, and he said, uh, he said some, he's, I, I, I could tell in business meeting that he seemed a little distracted, and I, I could notice that he seemed like he was somewhere else, and he told me after church that, Somebody had taken their life. 
He said it happens every day. He said it's more common than you know. And, and I'm not preaching on that today, but I'm just trying to say that sometimes uh, when you leave, uh, the separation is final and there's no way to hardly get back. Well, I mean, when the there when the Lord was just 12 years of age and uh, he had been, uh, he had been uh, astonishing the doctors and lawyers in the temple uh, and my friend and, and, uh, and Joseph and Mary uh, and they left uh, and the Bible said uh, that they went a day's journey uh, and they realized that the Lord was not there. But did you notice something? It took them three days to get back. They went a day's journey before they realized the Lord was not there, but it took them three days to get back to where the Lord was at. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying sin will cost you more than you want to pay. It'll take you farther than you want to go, and it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. I want to preach this morning on this thought. Will you also go away? We see three groups of people in our text. There may be others. Maybe some of you preachers who study this out and can uh, expound on that. Uh, but simply, quite simply in our text, I see at least three group of peoples gathered here uh, as the Lord gives his sermon uh, on the bread of life uh, uh, as the Bible says that they're offended, uh, offended that this is a hard saying uh, when he spoke of uh, uh, his body that would be broken uh, and his blood that would be shed at Calvary. Uh, uh, my friend, I see three groups of people. First of all, the most obvious and a part of our text, our, our title is the group that we call the defectors the defectors, and, and uh, I, I see them there in verses 61 through verse 65. And the Bible says, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, doth this offend you? What, and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where the, he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except as it were given unto him of my Father. And then in verse 66, the Bible says, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. They were defectors. I mean, they could no longer abide by the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, the road had gotten hard and, and the journey was starting to get difficult. May I say today, Lord, the way of the cross is a hard way. God did not save us in our sin. He saved us from our sin, my friend. And if the Lord Jesus Christ ever does a work in our heart, in my heart, we will be a new creature in Christ Jesus. No such thing making a profession of faith and going back out in the world and living like the devil and truly being saved. God did a work in your heart. It'll show up. I mean, what he did on the inside will show up on the outside. And so, my friend, I see the defectors. There's four things about their defection that I think bothered them. First of all, as we've already preached in verse 61, when the Lord asked that question, he said, does this offend you? I, I believe they were offended by the teaching of the blood of the cross. Hey, I, I'm just an old-time bloody Baptist, and I still believe in the shedding of blood. There is no remission of sin, and this way is a bloody way. We've been bought and paid for by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and it is not symbolic, but it's a reality. Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood at Calvary. It was required of a thrice holy God to satisfy the judgment of God against the sin of man. And they were offended by the blood. I think they were offended when he said in verse 62, he said, what if and what and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. I think they were offended by his ascension. 
In other words, you say, how come? Because if the Lord uh, that went to Calvary, uh, if he died and was buried and he rose on the third and appointed morning and he ascended back to the Father like he said he would, that meant that he truly was uh, the Son of God uh, and Lord of all lords. Uh, and they were offended because, uh, because he was the Lord. And I tell you, man does not like to give up the kingship of his own life. Most people want to be in control of their life. They don't want to be told by anybody. They don't want to be told by the Bible. They don't want to be told by the Lord. They don't want to submit to authority and to rule and to lordship. They like salvation, but they don't like lordship. And if the Lord was truly the Lord and ascended, that means that they had to submit to his authority. Not only were they offended by the blood, not only were they offended by his ascension, I believe they were offended when he spoke of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you see, because in verse 63, the Bible says, it is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. Oh, listen, my friend. I have no confidence in this flesh. I gave up on this flesh a long time ago. I mean, this flesh is rotten and filthy. It's going back to the dust of the earth from which it came. We would like to think that somehow or another that we can please God and achieve salvation in this flesh. But my friend, if you've never been quickened by the Holy Spirit and regenerated and made a new creature in Christ Jesus, you're still lost and in your sin. And people have tried everything to call it salvation. Baptism, uh, catechisms, uh, uh, rituals and religion. But my friend, salvation is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it takes the quickening power of the Holy Spirit. Without that, we're still lost and in our sin. They were defectors. They, they couldn't bear up under the fact of the blood of the cross. And it bothered him them that he spoke of being Lord. And, and it bothered them to, to think that they were no longer in control. That this flesh, uh, that this flesh had uh, uh, control of our destiny. That it was the Spirit of God that quickeneth and makes us alive. Old fashioned Bible believing Christians have been preaching for a long time. In regeneration. I tell you, if you've not been quickened by the Spirit of God, you are none of His. If, you, if you've never been saved, you're still lost and in your sin. You, you can't agree to salvation. You can't will salvation. You can't create salvation. It takes the quickening power of, a, of the Holy Spirit to, to make us new again. They were defectors. And I think they were also offended because he spoke of the drawing power of God. In verse 65, the Bible says, And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Oh my. I mean, I mean my friend, no man can come and be saved unless God draws him. I, the day I got saved, I didn't just say I'm going to get saved today. It took the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. It took the wooing and the drawing of God. He drew me unto Himself. I, I mean, my friend, I, I didn't get, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't will salvation. God drew me with cords of love. That bothers a lot of people, especially in this world of easy believism that we have today. Recite a prayer. A, B, C, one, two, three, repeat after me, declare I'm saved. But I tell you, my friend, the day I got saved, God drew me unto himself. I, I was broken hearted. I, I had a contrite spirit. I, I didn't come to the altar blowing bubble gum. I, I got up out of my seat I, up with a broken heart and I knew I was lost and headed to hell. I, and my friend, I repented and God saved me from my sin. 
The first group, he said, will you also go away? I mean, the multitudes are before him, and all of a sudden, they begin to disappear. They begin to fade off into the sunset, and he turns, and he looks to his disciples. He says, will you also go away? Will you also, are you going to leave? And my friend, I see the defectors, and then I see the degenerate. In verse 70 and verse 71, we see Judas. The Bible says, Jesus answered them, said, have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas as scared of the son of Simon, for he it was the, that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Judas left because he was a betrayer. Judas left because he had a devil. And Judas left because he was a professed follower. And Judas left because he was a hypocrite. And Judas left because he was not who he said he was. I believe we're living in difficult days. And I believe it's going to be harder for people to be chameleons in church. I, I believe it's going to be harder for people to blend in and pretend to be a Christian. I, my friend, I, I believe it's going to get more difficult as the, as the pressure gets harder and as, and as people begin to, uh, as the division between uh, Christians and the world gets greater, it's going to be harder to blend in. Judas was able to blend in for a long time. He walked with the Lord. He walked with the disciples. He, he carried the money bag. He, he was chosen of the Lord. He was one of the twelve. But I mean, in the shadow of the cross, I, I mean, it's getting closer. It's not much longer. Judas is not going to be able to stay much longer. Will you also go away? I see the defectors. I see the degenerate. But thanks be to God, I see the determined. We sit there with Peter. The Lord asks this question, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, Peter had made a similar confession already and Peter had already grasped the, the spiritual message and the truth that the Lord Jesus Christ had taught that He was, uh, uh, that He is the resurrection, that He is eternal life, that He is the Son of God and, and them that believe on Him shall be saved. Uh, I mean, my friend, after standing in the presence uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Peter was not satisfied with Confucius. Uh, he was not satisfied with Buddha. Uh, he was not satisfied with Muhammad. Uh, he was not satisfied uh, uh, with Lenin. Uh, he was not satisfied with Marxism uh, or Plato or Aristotle. Uh, he had stood in the presence uh, of the living God uh, and he said, Thou art the Christ. Yes. Salvations of the Lord. He was determined. Now we know Peter. Yes. He was not yet uh, uh, he, uh, he was not yet indwelled by the Holy Spirit. And we know uh, what he did there, at, uh, uh, there at, at Pilate's Hall in the judgment, how he denied the Lord. But my friend, uh, hey, sometimes uh, we, like to, we like to take jabs at Peter. But my friend, oh, listen, uh, I'm not so sure some of us wouldn't have done the same thing. Uh, but my friend, he was determined to stay with the Lord. I see three groups of people here today preaching on this thought, will you also go away?